My dear brothers and sisters, this morning our scriptures speak to us about being sent as missionaries. We heard in the first reading, Amos is sent by God from the kingdom of Judah to the kingdom of Israel, a kingdom that had turned away from God and whom God was sending Amos to call them back into right right relationship with him. We hear in the gospel as well, Jesus sending forth his apostles to preach repentance and acceptance of the good news. And they were sent with authority to drive out many demons so that the Holy Spirit could come and fill the people who they were sent to. We as Catholics and as Christians have mission as our identity. We gather together for this Eucharistic banquet, this celebration of the Lord's Supper. But we call it Mass, which comes from the Latin word misa, which means to be sent, to go forth in mission. Pope Francis has been reminding us of this identity that we are called to be missionary disciples. This is rooted in our identity from baptism. When we are made members of Christ's mystical body, united to Jesus Christ the vine, filled with his Holy Spirit, we become temples of the Holy Spirit, empowered through baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, confession, anointing of the sick, and all the other sacraments to go forth and to share the mission of Jesus, whether it be in our homes, whether it be as active missionaries like myself and the other Franciscans, whether it be as contemplatives in a monastery, still united to the proclamation of the gospel, the good news, that the world might might have the demons of unbelief And despair and meaninglessness sent away from them. So that they might receive instead the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. The spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, as a Franciscan, the Franciscans have from their foundation been a missionary order. St. Francis sent his first followers in a very similar way as scripture had it. In fact, we sometimes kid around that maybe St. Francis took Jesus a little too literally. First missionaries that he sent to Germany, they didn't know any German. And so the people asked them in German, are you heretics? And the, and the friars only knew the word, ja, yeah, which means yes. So the people started to beat them because they thought that they were spreading heresy. Well, I can't say that we as an order have gotten much more uh, practical because we're sometimes so committed to spreading the peace and the good that St. Francis preached. And he told his followers to preach virtue and vice, punishment and reward, to keep a reminder of the Lord's peace and good that God wants to give to us. Back in 1944... A group of friars from the Immaculate Conception province, my province, were sent from St. Anthony's Church in Soho, New York, down to Central America, to Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. And because we haven't learned much in the 700 years or so of the order, they didn't know Spanish. (laughs) They, They knew a little bit of Italian, and they would preach the Mass back in the day, of course, the Mass was in Latin, so they didn't have a problem with that. But they had to learn the Spanish while they were down there. And while they were down there, they began to see what demons, if you would, were in that society. Corruption of power. Exploitation of the poor. Disrespect for people. And they had to preach to the people, to the leaders, the truth about human dignity. One friar in particular who I'd like to focus on His name is Father Rocco Familietti. Maybe some of you have heard of him because he used to come up to North Providence often when he was alive. May God rest his soul. Father Rocco began to preach about the dignity of the poor. He used to say that the poor get the short end of the stick. That wasn't what he would actually say, but this is church. And he said, 
We want to give the best to the poor. Well, that would cause up a little bit of trouble with some of the, the local leaders who thought that they were, you know, like the local gangsters. So they threatened him and tried to kill him. But they forgot he's Italian and intimidation tactics don't work on Italians. But Father Rocco spent most of his life as a Franciscan from being ordained in, 19, in the 1940s till his death just five years ago in the missions. And at the age of 67, when most people are thinking about retiring, he said, I have a vision. And his vision was to found an orphanage in one of the poorest sections right outside of Guatemala City. But not just any kind of orphanage, a little chunk of North America, right down, smack down, dropped right down into Guatemala. People thought he was a little nuts. And yet he persevered. And today we have this orphanage in Guatemala called Valle de Angeles, the Valley of the Angels. There you find a doctor for the children so that they are well enough to learn. A dentist so that their teeth don't rot out so they can actually eat. They have a food program so they get proper nutrition. They have school from early elementary, now graduating high school. And they have a church. And they are also kept guarded too because... As you can imagine, since this is a place of the best for the poor, since it is a clean place, and obviously it takes a lot of money to give to the the poor the the best of, of the things that are down there, people get jealous and maybe want to start taking advantage. Father Rocco, of course, knew that his time was limited when he was in his 80s and realized that he couldn't continue much longer. And he found a priest from the north end of Boston by the name of Michael de la Pena. He's in his late 40s. And he found that he was called to go down and continue the work of Father Rocco. So Father Michael began to realize that people were taking advantage. They were stealing money from the orphanage. And he basically got them fired. He fired some of them. They started to threaten him and started to shoot Bullets at his secretary's car, but again, they forgot they were dealing with an Italian. (laughs) Intimidation doesn't work with an Italian. The work of Father Rocco, of Father Michael de la Pena, and our other Franciscan missionaries in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, is to dispel the demon of despair. I myself went down twice in seminary to spend a summer in once in El Salvador, once in Guatemala, and when I was newly ordained, they sent me down to Honduras to staff a parish. And I saw firsthand, with the corruption that are in government leaders, either you join a corrupt government and and try to get in with other cronies, which isn't a Catholic ideal, you can't cheat, can't take bribes, or you get in with the drug dealers, deal drugs, Or you get in with the gangs in order to get by. Or you get in with the coyotes. The coyotes are the people who deal in human trafficking, bringing people to North America. Or you despair and give in to drugs. Or you despair and take your own life. Or you despair and flee the country trying to go to North America. So the mission of our Franciscan missionaries down in Central America is to give the people hope that with the proper education and the proper values, they can make a difference where they are. That they have hope to be able to change things. Because they have God, they have health, and they have an education. I came here and I quickly found out last night that I don't have to get any of you to be involved and enthused with the missionary spirit. In fact, I found out that 20 of your youths are going on mission this week. So therefore, the missionary spirit is already here. I found out also, Father Joe surprised me, when he said that Father Rocco Familietti would come up 
to North Providence twice, three times a year when he was still living. And he would go to St. Saint Anthony's, to Father Ed's parish, and he would raise funds. In fact, I found out that Father Ed Cardente and Father Mark uh, are going on a mission trip to Valle de Angeles Orphanage this week, either today or tomorrow, taking down a group of people from North Providence down to Guatemala, to our Franciscan <coughs> mission site. And so, my message to you is not one of trying to get you to give, but rather to thank you for your generosity, for your continued support of our Franciscan mission down in Central America, to thank you for your prayers. And I ask that you continue your prayers, not only for our mission, but for the mission of the youths that are going out this week, the mission of Father Ed and all of those who are accompanying him. I ask also that if you have the means that you drop something in that second collection, because that will also go to Valle de Angeles Orphanage and to our other Franciscan missionaries. And because I know what it means to be a missionary, and God turned things on, 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 their head, on its head for me, taking me from my mission and bringing me back up here, for those of us who maybe feel like we're called to do something for the missions, but don't know what, we have to remember that one of the patron saints of the missions, St. Therese, whose relic I brought, she was living in a Carmelite monastery. She wanted to be a part of the missions, but couldn't actually go. So she prayed and corresponded with missionaries. We too, when we're not able to go, we pray for our missionaries. We correspond with them. St. Francis Xavier, whose relic is also here, he was very active. He went forth into Asia and baptized 33,000 people in 11 years. He was tireless in his missionary activity. And if the Lord is calling you to mission, you need only speak to the priests in the area. They will connect you with a mission, whether it be foreign down to Guatemala or something domestic like what the youths of the parish are doing. And of course, what collection of saints would be complete without St. John Paul II, the missionary pope who preached hope throughout the world, bringing the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the true freedom of the sons and daughters of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, sent to bring the good news, the good news of the blessings that God wants to fill us with, which we heard in that second reading. Blessings, once we have said no, to the lie and the deception of sin. And so, brothers and sisters, if anyone is wishing to, after Mass, I will be here, and I will, I will be quite happy to bless you with any of the relics that are here. But I, again, I thank you for your support, and I thank you for all that you do for the missions. May God give you peace.